there is a ton to go over today. So in a week of huge Sonic Show W's and one huge L, I have a few new major updates on the Sonic Heroes remake story that's been going around, and there's a lot that's coming out even now. And this is a project that I first mentioned forever ago, even before Sonic Frontiers Update 2 released. And I've come with a bunch of updates to cover on the project, including, yes, proof of its existence, even if it is quite, quite far, far away. away. But there is a caveat, and it's one that certain people lacking reading comprehension are trying to twist about this, whether intentionally or accidentally for many, but I want to be completely open and honest with my coverage here and show this story in its entirety, because while it is confirmed to be in the early stages of production, and we do have some more details on that that I want to cover, again, I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for an announcement anytime soon. Now, one thing that's pretty interesting is this story comes right off the heels of the Toys Party gameplay reveal, which there's been even more gameplay leaks since then, but that's a topic for another day when Sega's ninjas aren't after me. But Midori had been the first one to post about this, so her credibility is through the roof right now, especially with not just her Poyo Poyo leak getting confirmed by Sega, but Toys Party was originally mentioned by her, so she has a flawless track record so far. However, in a strange turn of events that I'm going to cover towards the end of this, due to a blog post by, yes, Zippo, as well as an apology she issued, Midori has decided to leave her account as well as posting links in general. And the discussion of this was so immense that both Midori and Zippo were trending on Twitter for days. Hey. And while it is a pretty dark story, I will say it does have a nice ending, which ties it all together nicely. So, a ton of cover today. And before I get into the weeds of it, slap a like, double check your subs to God's chosen source of Sonic news, and hear some words from one of my favorite sponsors. Man, I'm so hungry, and I'm also a loser, so I don't have the time or skills to cook. What am I gonna do for food? Whoa, whoa, whoa wait, is that... Were, were those there the whole time? Holy heck, are those factor meals? Fresh, never frozen meals that are chef prepared, dietitian approved, no prep, no mess, heat and eaten in two minutes. Ugh. No wonder they're America's number one ready to heat meal kit. Factor tastes great and is super nutritious. And I even just now made a sun dried tomato chicken and zucchini noodles, which took no exaggeration, seven minutes to heat up in my oven, and only two if you want to microwave it. And I personally love factor meals because I already go without sleep to make these videos, but now I no longer have to go without meals. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code SONIC50 to get 50% off your first factor box and 20% off your next one. That's code SONIC50 at factor75.com and I genuinely love these and don't want this partnership to end. So you literally have to check this out. Thank you, Factor. Now back to Funny Raccoon Man. Now for this first story on the new Sonic Heroes remake updates. To cover the basic context, this story initially begins a while back. I first mentioned and covered what was then rumors of a Sonic Heroes remake slash remaster on July of 2023. At the time, I said there was about a 50-50 shot of these rumors coming true, as while the only hint was Tails Tube's subtle, cryptic, and possibly meaningless extensive clips of some cutscenes that appeared to be in a much higher quality than what we'd previously seen, something that is, in all fairness, a pretty sizable hint on its own. Regardless, the biggest factor for me thinking it would get the remake treatment is that it would also make the most logistical sense for a from the ground up remake as you know if modern sonic team were to make any gameplay changes to the adventure titles and that specific formula fans would be furious even if they made some quality of life improvements sonic team honestly just isn't there with trust yet they're doing good but they have a little bit of ways to go however heroes is in a very different situation because it's a great game that's held back by stuff like what many fans regard as slippery controls, something I personally have never really had any issues with. But that also might just be because I grew up with the game as a kid, so I've put a billion hours into it and know the controls like the back of my hand. I'm probably better at walking in Sonic Heroes than I am at walking in real life. That said, the best part about a remake is that even if you don't like Heroes controls or gameplay, with Sonic Team directly working on it from the ground up and not just porting it one to one, this gives them the opportunity to go back and 
fix all the problems fans have to make this a truly great game that all types of players can universally love. And most importantly to Sega, Sonic Heroes is a title that's incredibly marketable. It's the fifth best-selling Sonic game ever and is only barely outsold by Frontiers. Heroes has the most multiplayer modes of any Sonic game ever, ever. including superstars. It includes a ton of characters and yes, while the gameplay varieties are all extremely similar, at the same time, all the gameplay modes are fun. Something that not everyone would agree upon with other Sonic games. The separate team serves different difficulties, minus Chaotix, who just serves to be a unique playstyle. But since the three main teams serve as difficulties rather than separate game modes, to call it repetitive because of that isn't really fair in my opinion. I think it's neat that they tie characters to difficulty, and if they made this concept more transparent in the remake, it's likely people would be more open to it. Now, with that pretty important background info out of the way, let's get into the new updates about the leak itself. It all starts with a post that will make a lot of people disappointed, but for reasons we just covered, I completely understand. So Midori makes a tweet in response to a user asking to confirm some information about the Sonic Heroes remake in Unreal Engine 5 that reads, This is correct information, but there is not Sonic Adventure remakes right now. Which of course is probably for the best considering who needs more touch-ups, but she also writes more into that with Sega Group wants developers to gain experience with different engines. Which with Unreal Engine not only being outsourced, they don't have to document and deal with time-consuming engine issues, as well as be forced to train talent from the ground up, since no outsider can possibly have any knowledge of Hedgehog Engine 2, with it being entirely proprietary to Sega. And with Unreal's Nanite technology, you can render all in real time some absolutely crazy stuff, all while still using low CPU and GPU, so it can run on an array of hardware, including, yes, the Switch. Now, even if Nintendo's editor-in-chief also writes confirming these rumors of a Heroes remake, but also saying they haven't seen anything about an adventure remake either, backing up both of Midori's claims. Now, on the actual progress of where Heroes remake like this is, well, Midori writes, The Sonic Heroes remake is being considered, but I do not think the original source is correct about it being released in 2026 or 2027. So if Sega and Sonic Team were at the time of the info she got, openly considering it and shopping it around, presumably looking to recruit talent because I don't know why else it would get to the point where Midori heard it. Regardless, with her post, it's clear that the absolute farthest it could possibly be is as some early pre-production, especially if they're using Unreal for this, which they haven't done for a Sonic title before, so they have to get his control and everything else down pat first. Now, to be fully transparent with this story, it's not entirely clear if this Unreal usage will apply to Sonic or just other titles Sega is developing. I say that because Midori also made a new post stating, Sega's UE5 usage will be on a case-by-case -case basis and we already know Hedgehog Engine will still be used sometimes as, of course, Sonic X Shadow Generations is using it since it's not like they're going to make a massive jump over to Unreal just for the tiny changes they're making as well as the Shadow DLC. The only ones she confirms for sure will be Unreal or Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio, but the rest are still unknown. Now, again to reiterate, the earliest the Sonic Heroes remake can be is pre-production, and for clarity, that doesn't mean it started the actual production at all, but it's just the planning period where they lay out and structure everything, as well as begin to design the levels through concept art, but no actual development of the game yet. And that's backed up by Midori, who in response to someone asking if it started development, she writes, I don't think so, and I do not know about this remake title being released in the next three years, and I don't have any information on that. Which makes sense, if the game is just in pre-production, and these titles take a long time behind the scenes before we even hear about them, then the reality is, for them to make this from the ground up properly, is going to take quite a bit more than three years. Especially if it's a smaller team behind it and not the main Sonic team. Now, weirdly and interestingly enough, the Sonic Heroes remake and Unreal Engine stuff actually tie directly into Midori leaving. So I want to be fair, and as tempting as it may be, not be biased against Zippo in my coverage, but I do think covering both sides will paint a somewhat obvious picture in your minds. So it started in a tweet by Midori in response to a user that reads, Yesterday when it was claimed by Midori about Sega considering remakes for UE5, Zippo ran with it and claimed Heroes was getting the treatment. Then Midori later 
later confirmed it was just being considered and not actually in development. And now Zippo looks silly. To which Midori responds to the user with, this is correct information. I messaged someone with this information because they were a friend, but I did not know they knew this is Zippo and I think they used it to create a rumor. So I won't message information anymore. I will be more cautious now with my information. Sad face. And she follows herself up with another response writing, his information was also sent by someone to this Zippo, but I wasn't told that it was sent and I do not know who is Zippo. I am reading now. And she links to his Sonic Toys Party blog post where he just reiterates the same information others had reported, but he also includes that he hasn't seen any footage, which these other outlets who posted their articles about it one day later did. And I uh, <laughs> may have been the Robin Hood for the people and uh, posted the footage I received because it had no employee's identity tied, so nobody was going to get in trouble for it. And most importantly, I knew it wasn't going to get out otherwise, as the people that had it love the ego fuel of having information you don't have. <laughs> Something that I get, but I just personally don't partake in. Now back from the reason I have a target painted on me from Sega. These tweets from Midori, while seemingly harmless, set Zippo off. Oh. A flame went off in his brain and all he could see was red. So he made a short blog post called Ari Midori, which I'll quickly read since I have some critiques and there's inconsistencies throughout I want to cover, as well as it's just a fast read and I think it's only right to be fair to Zippo here. And hey, I honestly can't tell if it makes him look better or worse to read it in all its context, but here we go. So it starts with sigh. I hate this type of stuff. Genuinely. Drama is something that stresses me out. I'm simply sharing information here. I have no beef nor any rivalry with anyone that does this type of thing. Which, by the way, before this blog post, there was no drama. I just showed you everything that prefaced this. So ironically, this is where the drama brutes. But Zippo continues with, I've been made aware of some tweets that were made by famous Sega slash Atlas leaker, Midori. In it, she makes some bold claims, claiming that I know one of her sources Sources, and that me and or my sources are one in the same and or that I've stolen information. Which I've read all the tweets and context relating to this. Where did she say any of that at all? In all of her responses, they were courteous and even apologetic. She even on multiple occasions linked people to his blog and backed up multiple things he said. Regardless if she's backing it up because he just got the information from her post. Alas, Zippo continues with no genuine offense to Midori but these claims are absolutely baseless and simply untrue. If I were to make a guess, I would say that she just noticed the undeniable similarities in our information and just panicked. Which, why is everything so exaggerated in Zippo's mind? Why would she be panicking? Ironically, after this blog, she did end up panicking, so this might be the closest thing Zippo had to getting a leak correct. But he continues with, I can confidently say with 100% certainty, we do not share sources. I've obviously been in this game much longer than she has, and the things I've gotten right over the years speak for themselves. Which is a bold statement for Zippo to say, considering there is not proof of him in his entire career ever getting a story right that wasn't reported by someone else first. His biggest consistency is messing up, and even when other people report it first, he'll often add all these little details that almost entirely turn out to not be true. He just creates that exclusive, even if he has to conjure it up himself. He continues with, some things to make abundantly clear. I have been hearing about a new Fantasy Star game for months before yesterday's post. I and other people were privately talking about Heroes weeks before I released Monday's story. Which, Zippo, if you're not lying and you truly did hear about these for so long, why not talk about it until after it was already covered by someone else? It's not like you have a strong reputation reputation as a leaker to uphold, and as a leaker, leaking information is kind of what you do, albeit not very well. He continues writing, I'll actually take a dig at myself here. If I somehow shared sources with Midori, don't you think my track record would be much better than it is now? Full transparency here, she clearly has much more accurate Sega sources than I do, which to give credit to Zippo, well, this is something obvious we all know. It is nice that he admits it, so hats off to him here. I'm tipping my fedora to you, Zippo. And Zippo continues with, I'm not here to start any fights, but I will absolutely defend myself 
from claims like this that are bogus. This is going to be the one and only post I make about this. Kindly leave me out of this Twitter crap. Please and thank you. I genuinely want nothing to do with this. This is anti-fun. I don't have Twitter and I won't be making one. Please don't ask. Regardless of what's been said here, meaning regardless of the comments I'm making in this very post, I hold absolutely zero ill will towards Midori. And I hope no one else here does either. Trust me, buddy, they don't. It was just you. She seems like a cool human being and she's done a great work. And I'm sorry to break it to you, Zippo, but you guys aren't going to bond over the fact that you're both leakers. And she's not going to sleep with you, buddy. I'm sorry. Even if something I got was wrong versus right, what is that what? I'm always going to be super transparent to you guys about it. I owe that to you. Spoiler alert, Zippo has never been transparent. I, in fact, I think he owned up to being wrong one time ever. And that was recently. More scoops coming along soon, but this had to be clarified. And after Zippo's post went up, the same day, Midori tweets out, It is difficult, but I would like to stop using this account. Thank you for reading my Sega group information. Please continue to look forward to the future of Al Atlas and Sega. And that was posted on March 27th. And until now, she has not tweeted since then. And it's sad to lose someone like her at a time when she's the only consistently correct and reliable leaker. So this is kind of a huge kick to the gut. However, even if she were to never return, one upside is that her legacy isn't even over yet. Before she left, she mentioned a variety of Sonic titles and said even more were in the works than the specific one she covered. And combined, that's for both console, PC, and yes, I know, some mobile titles. Something that half of my audience hates to hear about. But fear not, as we will not be covering those today. Even just thinking about those gives me PTSD. So we're still gonna have those titles to look forward to. However, just like how God set the bush on fire to prove himself, if Zippo wants to be taken seriously, I personally need Zippo to do something to prove himself. And the only two ways I can see that happening is he has to get something huge correct and be the first one to report on it. Or he has to have some sort of debate with me and prove himself because I know a lot of Sonic tubers ride for Zippo, but I just do not get it at all. And the proof's in the pudding, and I can't find any pudding. Zippo, where is the pudding? And we always thought the Sega Assassins would take out Midori, but I never expected Zippo to be the one to hold the weapon. And all jokes aside, to be somewhat fair to him, he didn't try to make her quit, but at the same time, that blog post was incredibly obnoxious, untrue, and most importantly, Completely unnecessary. And also, breaking news, current update from the future. Now this story actually ends with some good news, because Midori has just now announced and confirmed that she will be returning to post Atlas and Sega leaks. Meaning yes, W Midori, L Zeppo, 100, 100, 100, 100, classic Midori W, and classic Lippo L. So we will have Midori to look forward to hearing from in the future, and with her impeccable track record. I'm really excited for what she has in store, especially when it eventually comes time for info about the next main Sonic game. And to Zippo, honestly, you really have to just start getting some things right and be first, or you have to debate me. Those are your two options. But until then, I'm declaring Midori the winner. So a great bow and wrap up to this battle. Even when it seemed like Zippo, despite his unpopularity among the masses, had won and defeated Midori in this fight, it turned out Midori, in a very Easter-like manner, returned from the beyond and rose again. Again, meaning that's right, Midori rises. So that's where we are today. The Sonic Heroes remake is real and in existence, but it's just in the consideration and concept stages, so you're not going to be seeing it anytime soon. However, when it does come, like the Final Fantasy remakes that I remember people talked about forever ago, they were like, oh, it's going to take so long, and then the, they both came out and people were like, wow, these are amazing. Where the Sonic Heroes remake comes, it's going to be a very sweet surprise, and one I'm really Really optimistic for. And I know this game is base because whenever I tell people I love it, the pitchforks and torches come out and everyone is down my throat with ice, slipping all over the controls everywhere. With that, drop, drop a, like. a like. Not even just if you liked, but regardless if you liked it because look at all the effort I put into this video. You know it at least deserves a like. Peace and toodaloo. Toodaloo! Do we like the toodaloo? Toodaloo? Do -do 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 subscribe.